Hi everybody, this is David, and apparently, y'all like hearing about, you know, mistakes, bad things that happen to people, and our gaming regrets. So today, I've decided that it might be a fun idea to invite 10 of my best YouTube friends onto my channel for them to share their biggest regrets. So here we go. We're going to be listening in on 10 great RPG YouTubers and hearing about the games that they really wish that they did not play. Starting with Lady Pelvic. Regret. Feel sad, repentant, or disappointed over something that has happened or been done, especially in a lost or missed opportunity. The number one thing I value in life is time, as that's something you can never get back. I have to be mindful how I spend it because I'm a woman of many interests. Drawing, YouTubing, gaming, trying to keep up with this season's anime, now learning Japanese while trying to have a semblance of a social life. All of these things give my life value, something Final Fantasy XII did not. It's bizarre because I played the entire game and as soon as I was done, I felt like I forgot everything. Not much stuck with me. Not the story, not the characters, okay, maybe except Larsa. Moments that happened came and went. I felt like I spent 40 hours of my life doing a whole lot of nothing. I didn't take away anything. I couldn't for the life of me remember much. If someone quizzed me on Final Fantasy XII directly after beating it, I feel like I'd fail. I'm a character-driven girl and this cast put me to sleep. Their interactions, their backstories didn't amount to much, character slots were wasted, a villain who doesn't even know who you are, a lot of MacGuffin chasing, and frankly, the music was lame. Yeah, I said it. If there's a game I could get my time back from, it's Final Fantasy XII. Wow, what do you mean you didn't like Final Fantasy XII? I can't believe this. Everybody's taste is a little bit different, although I do understand what she's talking about when she says she has no idea what happened in the story because believe me, I didn't either. Let's listen into gaming productions now. Hey, how's it going everyone? Corbin here from Gaming Productions. Thanks for having me on, David. I've watched your channel for a long time now, so this is pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. Games that I regret buying, huh? Well, there's definitely one that instantly comes to mind. Now, technically, I did not buy it myself as I got it gifted for Christmas one year as a young lad. However, it was still disappointing all the same. The game in which I'm referring to is the infamous Unlimited Saga. I say infamous because it was critically panned upon release in the West, both with fans and critics. Why you ask? Well, it pretty much just boils down to it being confusing as hell. The Saga series has always been known for its open-endedness and more abstract nature, however Unlimited Saga took all that and cranked it up so high they broke the dial. This is far from a traditional RPG experience and more plays out like a tabletop RPG or a board game. There's a lot of luck involved and I remember there's even slot machine reels factoring in and performing actions in battle and it's just so weird. Okay, very atypical, complex gameplay, not necessarily a bad thing on its own, but the bad thing is, is that none of it is explained at all. It's the most player unfriendly RPG I've ever played by far. I'm not going to say it's a bad game as it really is a one of a kind experience and I'm sure there are some players out there who took the time to fully understand the game's mechanics and have come to enjoy it, however for me, that time investment was just not worth it. I was never that crazy by the Saga games growing up as they were always too confusing to me so in hindsight I have no idea what I was thinking asking for this one. What the hell's the matter with you? It's like, oh, you don't like sushi because it's too fishy? Here, try the sashimi instead, you'll love it. Yeah, no, I, I was pretty much an idiot. I think it was a visual aesthetic that roped me in. The graphics do look cool. No, oh yeah, the music is undoubtedly excellent too. I will give the game that. And to the few people out there that did actually enjoy this one though, I honestly respect your unique taste. Anyway, that about sums up my regret. Thanks again for having me on. Yikes! Unlimited Saga! I've gotta say, I actually went back and I searched through my games to look for Unlimited Saga to see if I had it too, because I know that I owned it at one point. I must have sold it, because believe me, that game blew. Let's hear from Super Derek. Hey David, thanks for having me on. Hey everybody, I'm Super Derek, and my biggest regret in gaming has to be having bought all four of the original Dot .hack games, that's Infection, Mutation, Outbreak, and Quarantine, buying all four of them at once at a convention. And I got a really good deal for them too. The regret is that I went all in without even having played any of them prior, only to eventually find out that I'd spent about 200 bucks on a bunch of games that didn't even really click for me. Now, I eventually went on to play the other .hack games and really enjoyed those, but 
they really didn't appeal to me and my sensibilities. I'm not really big into MMOs or the culture of people playing MMOs or the original Isekai that was the original Dot Hack series. And I know a lot of people really love these games and more power to you, but I just wish I had started with the $10 copy of Infection to find out whether or not the other three would be worth it. I probably would have known after the first 10 bucks that maybe I'd save that extra 190. So yeah, cautionary tale. Before you, you know, bite the bullet, maybe try it before you buy it. Yeah, that's just, that's on me. I remember in college, I wanted those games as well, but I never did get a hold of them. But recently I did get a hold of this and now I'm scared about it. Should I even play it? Should I even bother? Hopefully it's good, let me know, and now let's hear about Food for Dogs' biggest regret. Hi, I'm Food for Dogs, and my game of regrets today, Dragon Sinker. When Dragon Sinker was first released about five years ago for the PlayStation, in the Vita community, uh, several people jokingly started referring to it as Dragon Stinker. And somehow that nickname stuck. Is the game really a stinker? Is that why I regret purchasing a rather expensive uh, limited run games a copy no the game is not a stinker the problem with regrets is that nine times out of ten it has to do with the prior expectations we had of a game for some reason dragon sinker particularly irks me because i spent many hours playing it it could have been so much better Kimco it probably didn't help the matter providing a marketing blurb for the game who wouldn't be enticed by that if you love traditional old style RPGs. I had higher expectations and they were not fulfilled. Kimco threw a lot of extras uh, into Dragon Sinker. More is not necessarily better. That's what RPGs are about in the end, and I happen to think that detail matters. It all uh, drags the game back to pretty much a similar level to where I would put other Capco RPGs. I'm well known for being a big fan of dragons, but this particular dragon, for me, did not soar. I'm afraid it was a sinker. Thank you very much for listening. I wonder how many of you have played Dragon Sinker. Everyone's favorite grandma. Isn't she just the cutest? Every time I see her videos, she just makes you smile ear to ear. I just love her so much. She's super cute. And now it's time to hear from Zygor Gaming, who I recently met on a game show myself. Let's hear his regret. Hey everyone, it's me Zyger from Zyger Gaming, and I wanted to tell you all that the RPG I regret buying the most was Chrono Cross. And I know what you're thinking, how sacrilegious, right? That probably just came right out of the left field, but to me, it just didn't live up to the expectations I had for it back then. And don't get me wrong, there are some aspects of it I liked, like the soundtrack, Mitsuda did a great job on that, and some of the combat mechanics, but I just couldn't fall in love with the characters and the story in the same way that I did with Chrono Trigger. Because that's one of the best RPGs of all time, I've covered it a lot on my channel, and everyone knows that that's really one of the goats in the whole genre. And I just didn't think Chrono Cross lived up to it. I, I just feel that the characters weren't as lovable, the story wasn't as great, I just couldn't feel that soul, that connection, the same way that I had with Chrono Trigger. And to this day, I've never beaten it. And uh, that probably makes me a charlatan to some extent when it comes to RPG fanatics. But that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. Oh, Zygor. Great minds think alike. Even though I have two copies of this game, I know, I'm crazy. But yeah, I have talked extensively about how I don't really like Chrono Cross either. So yeah, we are brothers not only in name, but in taste. Now off to Hollowed Be Thy Game. 
Hello everyone, Ren from Hallowed Be Thy Game, and I just want to thank David for the chance to come on and vent my woes for one of my biggest gaming regrets when it comes to RPGs that I've picked up. And unfortunately, there is only one game in recent memory that stands out from among the pack, and that is Knights of Azure 2 for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I say specifically for the Switch because this is an incredible action RPG, hidden gem for the PS4, but without question, it is one of the shoddiest and nastiest port jobs I've ever played. Look, people who may not know, I am over the moon about the Switch and usually suffer from terminal optimism when it comes to games. However, even Copium couldn't help ease the pain that he essentially felt robbed for purchasing this game. So why am I a salt mine when it comes to this? Is it just the fact that this game almost constantly runs in the single digits for frame rate? Is it because they didn't even bother to change the button configuration from the PS4 to the Switch? That wasn't what soured the well for me. But it's the fact that this game currently holds the record for the most playtime I've lost to hard crashes. I stopped counting after four and a half hours. The latter third of this game was a nightmare for performance. After missions, you'll have to return back to the quest hub, and it just so happens to be a dice roll if the game is going to hard crash out when you talk to anyone. So literally, I would finish a quest and then beeline it to the save terminal. It was only due to my borderline psychotic need to finish a game that I've started that got me through this version. And for the record, I've since played this on PS and I loved it. It's a great game. This series is incredible, but under no circumstances should this game be sold to consumers on the Nintendo Switch in its current state. I've memory hold how much I paid for it, but whatever it was, it wasn't worth it. Anyways, thank you so much for the chance to share my woes with you all. I wish you all the best, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Hollywood Be That Game. I guess my gay intuition kept me away from that one. I kind of knew that it wasn't going to be my thing. Now, here's Tark's Gauntlet. Hey everybody, Tark's of the Gauntleted Variety here. When it comes to gaming, I find I'm generally a pretty patient person. If one thing in a game doesn't work that well, it's not a deal breaker for me. I can usually play around a game's weaknesses and double down on its strengths to find its value. But on the rare occasion, a game can really take it out of me. One game that did was Akiba's Beat, a spin-off title to the already janky beat-em-up series, Akiba's Trip. Akiba's Beat sees us engaging in an idle and music-focused story on the streets of Akihabara, entering dungeons and engaging in tales of action combat. Thing is, the story is told through endless visual novel segments that use a lot of words to say very little. The dungeons are linear, small and uninspired, and the game asks you to repeat them several times over and over again, just padding the runtime. And the combat, while a step up over Akiba's trip in some ways, is simply too stiff to deliver on what it's trying to accomplish. While none of these things are good, I could manage to play around them if it wasn't for one other thing that just broke me. That thing would be this guy right here. Pinkoon, the game's mascot character. He talks endlessly, chiming in during everything you're trying to do. And I'm not joking, I counted once and he had quipped over 100 times during one hour of gameplay as I just wandered around the town. You can swap out what voice talks to you while you're out and about, and while some of them are far less grating than Pinkoon's, none of them are tolerable. This one thing was impossible for me to ignore and drove me to dropping the game, which is something I rarely do and found myself not having to do for games that are arguably worse. It just really got under my skin. And to think they had so much faith in this character Character, they gave away mini plushies of him as a pre-order bonus. From top to bottom, Akiba's Beat was a below average experience, but this one part was impossible for me to get over. Now that's maybe a shallow reason to drop a game, but I simply couldn't do it. But that's all I'm gonna say on that. Thank you David Vink for giving me this opportunity to vent on your channel. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he was gonna burn that thing alive. Oh my gosh, that's so freaking funny. But again, my gay intuition got me. I knew that a game based upon undressing girls wouldn't really be my thing. Now let's hear from the Kaseki Nut. Hi guys, TKN here and thank you to David for letting me take part in this doozy of a video and as soon as he mentioned a game I regret purchasing, hoo 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 boy, there was only ever one that would take the pedestal. I'm just destined to not enjoy Compile Heart games. Everyone I've tried has bordered from mediocre to straight up bad, but Agarest Generations of War trumps the lot. 
If I had to make a choice between nailing my nuts to a plank of wood or playing this game, well, I'd still pick playing the game, but I would have to at least think about it. It's that bad. Generations of War is the equivalent of SRPG Shovelware, a game that has no redeeming quality. The protagonist is as interesting as a pack of polos and the heroines aren't much better, fresh out of the oven in their cookie cutter moulds. The gameplay is lacking in any sort of depth, it's monotonous and the mechanics get old very quickly. The maps themselves have no terrain advantages or verticality, at least from the 25 hours I played all those years ago. The difficulty spikes are obnoxious and it has no right to be as long as it is. Some people have seriously put over one hundred hours into this mess and I'll never understand why. In fact, I salute them for their patience. Never again. Idea of Fuckery strikes again with yet another bad game. I see their name on the case and I know not to buy it. It's a lesson hard learned. Next up, we have Taylor from The Gaming Shelf. Hey everyone, this is Taylor from The Gaming Shelf, and David, thanks so much for having me on this video to talk about a game that I regret buying. And the game that I regret buying most is White Knight Chronicles 2. Now to give this a little bit of context, let me put you in the mindset that I was in. This was the PS3 era where JRPGs were really rare, and they were also really low quality. So for us JRPG fans, we were desperate for anything good. And there was this new one coming out from level five. They did Dark Cloud, Dragon Quest VIII, and Rogue Galaxy. So so it's like, okay, I'll trust these guys to make something good. And so when I saw White Knight Chronicles 2, I pretty much bought it sight unseen. I probably should have looked at the reviews. It had this weird MMO style combat, a heavy emphasis on multiplayer, and kind of a strange town building mechanic. This was just not what I was looking for at all. I just wanted a good old classic turn-based JRPG with a world map where we all kill God with the power of friendship. Instead, I got whatever this mess is. I swear I've never returned a game faster. Or rather, I had to trade it in because I couldn't return it. In the end, it cost me $30 to sit through this miserable experience. So that's the game I regret buying most, and hopefully you didn't make the same poor decision that I did. Level 5 normally doesn't disappoint, but I got duped too. I know. Yeah, I saw level 5 and I thought, oh, how bad could it possibly be? And it's two games in one. You get White Knight Chronicles 1 and 2. It's gonna be amazing. It sucked. I completely agree with Taylor. It was god awful. Ugh. And now, last up, we have Backlog Battle Alex. Hey, what's up, everyone? Alex here. And my biggest gaming regret was buying Beyond the Beyond. Now, hold up, hold up. Before you throw some pitchforks in my direction, I had a very valid reason for this. That's because I was literally waiting for Final Fantasy VII to come out, and I just got my PlayStation, and I thought to myself, you know what, I haven't tried a JRPG on a 32-bit console, so I'm just gonna pick up Beyond the Beyond. And of course, I went into the game thinking like it's gonna be like some revelation like Final Fantasy VII with its fully 3D rendered graphics. But as it stands out, it had a lot more similarities with the 16-bit JRPGs that I was playing, but with a lot more 3D thrown into the mix. So while Beyond the Beyond really didn't deserve all the criticism and all the negativity that I threw at it, especially looking back many years later, I think the reason why this has become a regret is because I didn't fully appreciate what it was trying to do at the time. And given the fact that this was actually created by Camelot, which is a beloved studio, I just can't believe that I actually sold that game. I wish I would have kept it. Maybe my biggest regret is actually selling the game. Oh no, you sold it? Yikes, you know, that, that's like a whole topic for a whole another video. I didn't sell my copy, but I only spent $8.99 on it, so it didn't exactly break the bank either. Um, thank you all so, so much for coming onto my channel and sharing your regrets. I would love to hear about everybody else's regrets in the comments as well. Let me know, and as always, have a good day.